Hello and welcome back. In this activity, we are going to find the continuous time Fourier transform for signals for which we have a continuous time Fourier series. If you recall, in a previous playlist, a focus on the spectrum representation of periodic signals, we found that if a signal is periodic, we could find a Fourier series expansion. Okay? And we found that a Fourier series expansion had this relationship that we have here, meaning we could represent a signal as a sum, a sum of a scale, these are the scaling factors, a k coefficients, e to the j k omega zero t, meaning a scale sinusoids where the frequencies are all fundamental are harmonically related integer multiples of a fundamental frequency. If you are approximating, or in certain cases, you may have a finite number of spectral lines. In general, you could assume that you need an inf infinite number to do the perfect synthesis. So a couple of things. You recall, we are summing sinusoids where the frequencies are all integer multiples, notice here omega zero, that's the, the frequency, the fundamental frequency, one over the period, and this k is an integer, so all spectral lines, these are spectral lines, integer multiples, in order to produce the signal. Right? And we could do this for periodic signals, because periodic signals have a line spectra and furthermore, you not only have spectral lines, those spectral lines are all harmonically related. You have this k belongs to c, an integer of the frequency. So now we are saying, well, what will be the Fourier transform? If you know the Fourier series coefficients, the k, can you find the Fourier transform rapidly? Or do you have to do it all over again? And the answer is that there is a relationship between the continuous time Fourier transform and these AK coefficients. So let's think about it before doing the mathematics. Doing the mathematics, you know, if we want to find the spectrum of this X of T, we just plug it into our continuous time Fourier transform because it is our mathematical spectrum analyzer and we work out the math. But we need to develop intuition. What do we expect? Well, if the continuous time Fourier series gives us spectral lines at, that are harmonically related at integer multiples of the fundamental, what we expect? Well, we expect that the continuous time Fourier transform will have the same spectrum. The signal has the same spectrum, right? So we expect spectral lines at those points. But now we are not working in a discrete, meaning the x-axis is not integers of k. One, two, three, four, like in the continuous time Fourier series. Instead, we are working in a real line. And in a real line, the existence of a spectral line at a single point is problematic unless we allow impulses to play. And this is what we said before when we were going over the impulse function, is that if we allow the impulse function, this generalized function to work in the real line with the definition that we have, then we are going to be able to use the continuous time Fourier transform to do the spectral analysis of all continuous time signals. Whether they are aperiodic, like a pulse that we just did in the previous video, whether they are quasi-periodic or whether they are periodic. Okay. In periodic, we have another tool, the continuous time Fourier series. And so we want to see what is the relationship of the two. Okay? So let's do it. Our continuous time Fourier transform is defined as the integral from minus infinity to infinity x of t e to the minus j omega t dt. Okay? And this is equal. Remember, you put x of t 
The signal that you want to analyze the spectrum, you need to have a mathematical equation for it. And so that's the first question. Do we have a mathematical equation? Yes, we do. You put it into the Fourier integral, and what you get out? You get the spectrum as a function of the continuous time variable omega. And this, we denote it as j omega because we are not just getting the magnitude. We are getting the magnitude and the phase. So out of here, this is the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of t, we plug it in, sum of a k e to the j k omega zero t from k equals minus infinity to infinity e to the minus j omega t dt. Notice all I have done here is to plug x of t, which is a signal for which we have a Fourier series expansion, and this is what we have there. Meaning we can represent it into a sum of sinusoids that are harmonically related, and the amplitude of those sinusoids is modulated by the AK coefficient, which includes a magnitude and a phase. That's a complex number. Okay, so uh, this is equal to sum of a k k from minus infinity to infinity integral minus infinity to infinity and I'm going to <coughs> combine these exponentials e to the minus j omega minus k omega zero t dt Right? And so we are there because, if you recall, over here we can use that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the j omega t dt, this is equal to 2 pi delta omega. Okay? And so what we have here therefore, is that this is a k 2 pi delta omega minus k omega 0 k from minus infinity to infinity or 2 pi a k delta omega and we have a right at a result Let's interpret it and see if this is what we expected. What did we expect? We expected to find at each point where we had the spectral lines, which were the k omega zeros, we we'll find expect to find an impulse. That's the first thing. And we expected that relationship between the Fourier coefficients, this is what we have, and the AK coefficients. Okay? And this is what we have. So what you have is that if you have the AK coefficients, you don't have to redo the continuous time Fourier transform. If you have those, you multiply them times 2 pi, and then you have a spectral line at that frequency. Okay? So as an example, let's consider something like cosine of omega 0 t. What is the Fourier series expansion? Well, we can just use the inverse Euler formula. So one half e to the j omega zero t plus one half e to the j minus j omega zero t. So what are the a k coefficients here? So are these one half and one half? And what are the frequencies? Omega zero and minus omega zero. So this could be more complex, like in the square signal, you have an infinite number of spectral lines. And so, in the continuous time Fourier series, we will say, okay, at omega zero, we have a spectral line of one half amplitude, at a minus omega zero, one half. Notice that over here, what we have, these are integers, right? You're going to have the 
omega zero, the frequency, but then these are the k values and k are integers. So because it is discrete, the axis that you have is discrete, you can have a spectral line there that exists at a single discrete point. For, for us to be able to do this in continuous time, now this frequency, omega, is a real number, meaning omega belongs to the set of real numbers. What we have here is that we are going to have an impulse, so if we knew this, how do we go from this to the continuous time Fourier transform? Okay, we are going to multiply it times 2 pi, the, these coefficients, 2 pi ak, and wherever you have a spectral line like here and here, you're going to have an impulse. So in this case, at omega zero, we have an impulse. At minus omega zero, you have an impulse. As expected, right? The spectrum content is going to be the same. It is a periodic signal. You do not have a continuous spectrum, you have a line spectrum. And in order to plot a line in the real line, you need to have this generalized function, the impulse. Okay, so we knew that any point where you have a spectral line, like here and here, in the continuous time Fourier series, and understand that if you do this like for a square signal, periodic square signal, you're going to have all the spectral lines that we found. At all those points, that's why you have this sum here, this sum of impulses that are shifted at what points? Right here, right? At those frequencies, which notice they are all multiple of this omega zero, omega zero, okay, so. so you have two spectral lines in the continuous time Fourier series, you're going to have two impulses, notice the impulse, at the same frequencies, you will have a sum of them, if you have more than those, right, that are all shifted at those points, and then the next thing is what is the amplitude? Well, you pick whatever you had there, in this case it was one half and one half, now, that was the AK here of the Fourier series, and you multiply it times 2 pi. So in this case, you get pi and pi. That's the area, right? So that's what we found here. Is this right? Is this what we found when we did the continuous time Fourier series for the exponential or, or for the cosine? Indeed, what do we found? We find in a previous problem, when we work it out, we found that it, it had a spectral line at minus omega zero, spectral line at omega zero, and the area under the impulse was pi. This also illustrates that for continuous time signals, whether they are periodic, Aperiodic, quasi-periodic, you can use the continuous time Fourier transform, meaning this transform that you have here, as your unique and ideal spectrum analyzer, where you plug any signal for which you have a continuous time analytical expression in, and you get the spectrum out after you compute this integral. Thank you.